Hello everyone, we're going to go through some basic techniques on painting today, ready for when you start using your painting pages. I am going to use these just a little bit, some of you have already received them, some of you are waiting for them, some of you are yet to order them, but we'll be talking about those. But the first thing that we need to do is learn to load our brush properly. Because, think about it like this, so I'm going to be working with a half inch flat brush. And by flat brush, it means that all the bristles are flat and straight along the top edge. We call where the bristles all come together the chisel edge, and that's going to be really important to us when we're using and um, painting using decorative paint strokes. And the important thing about brush loading is if it isn't loaded correctly, it doesn't matter how well you execute that stroke, it's going to run out of paint, or the paint's going to blob out of the shape that you want. If it's loaded perfectly, even if the stroke and the technique isn't perfect, it still looks good and it's much more forgiving. So brush loading, although it's laborious when you first start and you have to and you get excited and you just think, oh, I'll just do one more stroke, I'd urge you to stop, clean down your brushes, maybe get some fresh paint out and actually start back at the beginning because it's like being given a piece of chocolate when you're treating yourself during a diet, that fresh paint and that new brush make all the difference. So I'm using, because I'm being thrifty, a couple of old pieces that I've already done some work on. This one's gonna be useful because the two things that I've got out here, one of them is my blending gel and the other one is the light brown. And I'm gonna show you how to use those to actually create some shadows on the flowers that we've already done. So this would be another step in addition to the decorative painting or the two brushed, um, the double loaded brush. But for the purpose of now, the first strokes we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a little blob of paint out, one of the, um, of the crimson and one of the white. And we want a piece about the size of a 2P piece. And I should have shaken this and just checked, this is a, pot that we've been using for a while. Now the blending gel will actually allow you to um, make this go a little bit further. It makes it stay wet a little bit longer. I'm moving this all into this space so that we can see and we can work really closely. And when you first get your brushes they are often the bristles are protected by what we call size and it just pulls all the bristles together and sometimes they can be quite stiff you can see look I'm knocking this one and it's sort of the bristles are glued together so you're just going to run my finger over those bristles and I'd be tempted to dip this into water to wash it out and the problem with that is I don't want the water to make the paint bleed so if I do want to make the paint go further or I want to dilute it I would actually be working with my gel and what you'll notice here is that the gel will discolor the brushes or color them as you can see where it's wet but what it isn't going to do is it's not going to bleed up the bristles so I'm just going to work that into them now I'm going to dip the corner of this brush into the white until it's halfway across the width of the brush. I'm then going to dip this one into the crimson. So I've got both of them on half of the brush and I'm now going to come into my paper and my palette and I'm doing this to load the brush and you'll notice that I'm dragging the paint backwards and forwards so that we've got a blended colour from pure white all the way through to the crimson and round to the other side. Now I know by the way that this feels that the brush isn't fully loaded and the way that I can tell you is if I just lift this up I'm going to let you see inside there's no paint in there and that's because we haven't loaded this brush sufficiently. So I'm now just put that to one side wipe my little fingers. I'm going to go back into here. I can come back onto the same patch and I can now I'm stroking it and I'm stroking that paint as I'm loading it into the bristles of the brush. And when you now look inside, and let me do the same exercise for you, you'll start to see how there's more of that paint. I'm just gonna wipe that on the card there. I should have got myself a little tissue, but look at how it, there's more of it. So, not gonna worry about a little bit of paint. So I'll put, whoops, 
or perhaps I'll worry about that brown bit. <laughs> Just going to wipe that out. This is a good point to actually learn what happens if it goes muddy. So that's considered muddy. I've lost that white edge. So I'm now just gonna pick the white up and I'm gonna come into a clean area until I've got that white edge back, which I did do luckily in just one stroke. So that you can see there and it's lovely and creamy. So let's take a look at our painting pages. I'm gonna come on to this one first of all. So these are the first strokes that I'm going to learn. So I'm going to pick up some paint and I'm going to make sure it's blended. I know it is because it feels well. I'm going to place this onto my painting page, place it down and it says here, double load the brush and then you can see the arrow going up and down to create the wiggle, move the brush up and down while applying gentle pressure. There we go, so up and down, wiggle, wiggle 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 and then again wiggle 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 and now get a kitchen um, piece of kitchen paper some baby wipes and wipe that off and you can repeat it or you can do what I like to do reload my brush and remember if there's no paint on here it doesn't matter how good the stroke is you will not execute execute it well and come on to a piece of practice board so on the edge and press down and all I'm doing is wiggling. Now, the smaller the wiggles, the tighter the little lines you get. The larger the wiggles, so the bigger, the taller I can go. Or I can actually do this. And you can see how I've got different sizes and different depths of wiggle. Now let's go back to our painting page and on this one it says to create the wiggle move the brush up and down while applying gentle pressure. That's what we've already done. Shorten the length of the wiggle line and curve slightly as you paint to create a scallop. So in my head when I'm painting a scallop I've got a V because we need to shorten that wiggle line. It's this red line we want to shorten. So I put my brush down and I'm wiggling and I'm turning the brush. So I'm wiggling it, but I'm shortening this line at the same time as letting that one extend. Let's go back onto our painting page. On the top and wiggle. And you will find that when you practice this, it gets easier and easier and easier. Okay, so let's go back in. Now, the next thing I would recommend is a whole row of them. And then you mark them for yourself. So you pick out the one that's your best. So let's do a few. And let's also see what happens when my brush starts to run out of paint. Now I'm pressing down quite hard now because I can feel that I'm running out of paint. And you can see here, this could have been my best stroke, but it doesn't look good because I've run out of paint. The better you get at brush loading, the longer your actual paint will last. So my first one, my second one, my third one, still ran out of paint. And I'm gonna show you how I've taken the paint all the way off the edge of these bristles. It's gone, it's moved all the way up to the top there or the center. So that's why I've had to press harder. However, there is still some paint on the other side. So if I then wiggle and I go back the other way, I can use up my paint. And it took me right to the end of that stroke before I ran out, whereas here I ran out right at the beginning. So your brush loading is really critical. I'm gonna dip into my blending gel and just show you what happens here. So now I'm gonna wiggle and I'm gonna come into that blending gel, just the very tip of my brush. And it then, the more I use it, it starts to get a little bit transparent, but it isn't bleeding. It's not running like water would make it run. It's like I'm creating this shadow effect and the scallop. So I'm gonna show you that shading right now and then we'll come back to another brush stroke.
So if I move that out the way and I come to this piece that was done a few days ago and I'm going to go into the work I've got here. So I'm just going to clean this brush down by taking off the paint and I'm now going to put some of the brown on and I'm going to go into the blending gel and I'm going to clean down my brush because I want to lose the white. So look at how I'm losing the white as I put it into the gel. So I'm losing that white and I'm purposely working on a piece of blackboard. Now, if I was at home and doing this, I would be potentially working on a, um, a glass plate that I'd then be washing in between applications. Or in fact, from time to time, I even put a piece of tin foil over a plate and work on that. So now I've got my blending gel on one side and my brown on another. And I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to just slide this round the edge and I'm gonna get the blending gel and I'm just gonna slide it round the edge. And what I'm doing is I'm tracing over the design so that I'm putting just a, a brown shadow on there. And you can see how it's just sort of fading as we go in, a little bit of brown there. If I don't, making sure I go up over to the edge. And I'm sort of antiquing the petals as I go. You can see, and if I put a little bit more on here. Right, I think I've got too much on this one, it's too dense. So I'm gonna go back with more blending gel and just lift off some of that color that I've got there. And now I'm gonna come in back in a tiny little bit of the brown again. Got a little bit too much, so let's take some of that off into my blending gel. And I'm just going to blend that along the edge of my leaf so that I get that vintagey, antique feel that you've got here. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to put some shadow flowers, some shadow petals in. And these will be, I need a tiny little bit more of the brown. These will be really faint. We just get them there. And they're just going to fade away. And a little bit more of that gel. And you can see that they will literally just fade away. Now, if I lift this up, you'll see how... We've got that sort of vintage shabby look and we'll come back to it when it's completely dry because it's still got a sheen on it. I need it to dry down flat like we've got here. And then these will become just more sort of shadows in the background. And this is a great thing to do when you're painting to lay down some flowers in the background and then add to it with some more flowers over the top. So we're going, we're going to go back to our practice sheets we'll go back to where we started the story. So first of all, we've learnt our scallop shape. Now we need to go back to and learn this shape. This is actually one of the first shapes that you need to learn and, it, and then together with the scallop is how we paint our leaves. So I'm going to take up some of my pink and my white, my red and my white, and because I've actually got these colours on my palette. I'm not going to waste the paint. I probably would have changed to green, but I don't want to waste the colour I've got. And if I look at how this has been done, it tells me to place the brush on the chisel edge and then to apply some pressure to allow the brush to be able to lay down the bristles and then turn and slide back up onto the chisel edge. Lay it down, turn and slide. Lay it down, turn and slide. Down and turn and slide. So let's take a look at that on the blackboard. So here you can see, I'm gonna place it on the chisel edge, lay down, turn, pull it back up on the chisel edge and slide it off. Down, push, slide up to the chisel edge down, push, slide to the chisel edge and we're starting to run out of paint. And that's good because again, it lets you see that it doesn't matter how good these strokes get, when you run out of paint, if it isn't the look that you want, because there are occasions where you want this 
open, faded, shabby edge, then it isn't going to work. And you can see now I'm really wasting my time painting with these strokes here because they are wasted. So whole pages, please, of these little strokes. And then let's start to play with the shape. So we're going to go, we're going to do our first one. And sometimes when I'm get, painting really quickly, I'll use my palette to just prime my brush so or my um, work surface. So I'm just priming where I've put that colour. And I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to pull it up to that chisel edge and I'm going to finish it. And then what about if we place the colour down and we do the same thing and we turn that brush into the chisel edge and then we come right over across. So we're creating those little flat leaves that you can see here. Now I am going to put some green out because the red and the white have been out for a little while. It's starting to get a little bit sticky. I can feel it when I'm working and I want some fresh paint. So I'm going to put a little bit of the green and again just about two, two, um, a two pence piece and we'll put that out and then go back. So back into the green and into the white. Now, the reason I love this so much is when you blend these colors, you will see a little bit of that red coming through. And the red looks fabulous because particularly for autumn, it changes the shade of green. It gives you a much better, more sort of softer, more natural, more autumnal color. You can see that little hint of red in there. If you ever get a stroke you don't like, or I've got a little bit I don't like there, I'm gonna go back over it. I'm gonna come back so I only picked my white up so that I can then pick it up and I can go over it so that I've got a nice clean edge. And then on the, literally on the chisel edge of the brush, I'm just gonna pull the brush and lead it into that leaf to create a stem. Let's look at that again because if I lead with the green so I've got the green is going to go first and it's going to come off the off the page first the white fills in the green if I turn it over and I put the green first the green fills in the white and you can see the difference with the starting point on both of those so having that little bit of red on the brush really does lend itself to bleed to blend in the color and it makes a difference now we're going to go on and we're going to paint a leaf and what we're going to do here is we're going to join this stroke and this stroke so remember the letters of the alphabet we're going to join letter a and letter b i don't mind what letters you call them but the two of them need to come together so i've now got my first letter and i'm creating that wiggle and then i'm coming up on the chisel edge i'm going to press down and i'm going to slide up onto the end I'm going to turn my brush over so I'm using the paint the other side and I'm going to do that same wiggle and I'm just going to slide into the edge and then let's lead with the green and go in with our stem. So it's all about practice. Practice and making sure you get this right. I'm just going to show you a couple of things that can go wrong. So let's get too much paint on here. Let's load it badly. Let's do this. So now what's happened, I get some more green and I get some more white because I'm really enjoying my painting and I'm getting very carried away. And I've just lost all definition on that brush. There's no green edge, there's no white edge. It's just a really nice shade of green. I've pushed the paint right up to the top. So you can see my paint is all around the middle of the brush. There's nothing at the ends where I need it for when I'm painting. So before I even start, I haven't got enough paint to create a perfect stroke. And if I do this for long enough and I mix it enough, not only will I push the paint right up into the bristles, what will start to happen is I will end up with a fluffy chisel edge. Now, the last thing we want are fluffy edges. So you keep going and you end up, let's, I'm so not used to making this happen that it takes me a minute to do it but a bit more and a bit more and let's get a bit more of a fluffy edge and there we go 
and you end up with this lovely fluffy edge and we've lost that chisel edge and look now I've got loads of paint on there and you'd think I'm going to be able to create great strokes and I can come down here but when I come to come off the edge I end up with this fluffiness at the end and that doesn't look good so what do we do we go back we take off this paint if we like the shade of green let's just load white until we start to get those two colors back and we start to see some definition in the way that we can paint and finally after just a couple of little strokes you come back and you're painting with two perfectly balanced colors again with nice tails. So it's about practice. I've said that two or three times already. I'll be seeing you for the next lesson in literally probably just a few days. Let everybody receive their pages. If you haven't already ordered them, don't forget you can get them from Create and Craft. For reference, just so that everybody knows, I've been working with our crimson and the leaf green. The blending medium is what I've shown you and also with our light brown and the brushes you need a half inch flat brush so until the next time everybody just enjoy the painting i have to tell you it's fiercely addictive but in the best possible way and every time you do a really good stroke well i think it's time to treat yourself to a little piece of chocolate